Hey all, <clears throat> this is Utaro from Orca, and I'm here to do a walkthrough of Whirlpools, which is our new concentrated liquidity AMM on Solana. So first of all, um, if you want to go to the uh, view for liquidity providing on Whirlpools, it's right up here. Um, note that for the first two weeks, this is a closed Orconauts beta which means that in order to provide liquidity, you need to hold onto a um, Orkanaut um, on mainnet. So in this case, I already have a DevNet Orkanaut in my wallet, so I'm free to provide liquidity. Um, so this view should look familiar to anyone that's provided liquidity um, in Orca before. So we have this stats bar up at the top that shows aggregate information. But down here, we show uh, the individual whirlpools that users can provide liquidity in. So we show kind of, you know, 24 hour trading swap volume uh, and liquidity. But if you go into the settings, you have the ability to show additional information such as um, 24 hour fees accrued and also uh, a breakdown of uh, the projected APR. So to talk about this a little bit more, um, where does APR or where does yield come from? Uh, basically two ways. One is uh, from the trading fees or the swap fees. Um, and then the other one is from the token emissions, so rewards. So one thing that's pretty unique about um, our implementation is that um, the liquidity mining rewards are built into the program itself. So you don't need to do anything additional. You don't need to uh, you know, stake your LP tokens after providing liquidity in order to earn yield or in order to earn these uh, token rewards, uh, you automatically start reward, uh, earning them. So in this case with Orca USDC, you see that um, you know 9% of the fees or of the yield is coming from swap fees and then 91 percent is coming from the orca emissions um, and you also see here um, in more detail here we um, you know the pool is distributing 5,000 orca tokens uh, per week to the entire pool uh, one thing to keep in mind here is the swap fees are using uh, the previous 24 hour uh, trading data in order to determine, in order to essentially project the estimated APR. So in that sense, this is always a um, kind of an estimate since, you know, the trading activity for the next 24 hours uh, may be completely different from the trading activity over the previous 24 hours. Either way, um, you know, this, this Orca USDC pool I think it looks pretty interesting, so I'll try depositing. The first step, we have a disclaimer. Uh, and the second step, we select the price range. So the uh, the differentiating, the, the most kind of visible uh, way in which Whirlpools is different from uh, what we provided in the past is that with Whirlpools, you can select the price range at which you want to provide liquidity. And one thing we actually do is we provide some suggested preset price ranges uh, for those who are less familiar with how to select a price range. One thing to keep in mind here is that, you know, this is in no way financial advice. Um, we are not saying that, you know, this will make money. Um, we're simply kind of suggesting a price range. So, you know, this is really for folks who have never provided liquidity before uh, in a concentrated liquidity AMM. Um, you can select one of these two and then, you know, provide a small amount, let's say $50 or $100, and just track the PNL uh, and how that position performs and use that as a learning opportunity. So you'll see here, um, this is the Orca US or the USDC Orca pool. Um, and you'll notice that the price range, if we'd zoom in a little bit, is uh, 78 cents, 78 cents to $7 and eight cents uh, as a price range. 
Um, right now, I believe Orca is between $2 and $2.50. So this is definitely a large price range. You know, essentially what we're saying here is that we want to provide liquidity um, for Orca as long as the price of Orca is between $0.78 cents and $7. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of a conservative price range. Um, the way that we generate this suggestion is by looking at the 30 day high and low for the, for the pair, and then using that as a basis for determining the low price and the high price. Um, you know, this is definitely something that we plan on continuing to iterate since, uh, our current heuristic is not perfect. Uh, but yeah, we definitely continue to plan on just like, uh, gathering user feedback uh, in order to figure out, you know, what is a reasonable suggested price range for new liquidity providers that just want to get started. Um, but you can also select a price range yourself. Um, and this step should look fam pretty familiar if you've used concentrated liquidity in the past. Um, you know, we get to show, we show uh, the liquidity in the pool itself. Uh, so you can see the other positions in the pool and you can also select a price range for yourself. So I would say, you know, for me, maybe a reasonable price range would be from $2 to, yeah, I think $5 sounds pretty reasonable. Um, yep. And then we scroll down a little bit more. We again show the breakdown of the estimated APR. Um, the deposit ratio and leverage. So this all looks good. I'll select an amount. Um, yeah, so I would say since this is my first deposit, I'll just try a low amount, $100. And then, uh, yeah, this is the confirmation step. Um, kind of a rehash of what we've already seen, how much is being deposited, the price range, and the estimated APR. We click confirm. We'll let this one go. Um, cool. So it looks good. Um, I see that we've put in our first deposit. Uh, one thing to note too is that when we do create the position, we also mint a token for you. And this represents the the, in, in my case, the $100 that I deposited into the Orca USDC pool that you will be able to see in your wallet. Um, and yeah, I mean, just like uh, kind of other implementations, if you uh, have, uh, yeah, so if you transfer the token, then you, know, you also tr transfer the, the uh, liquidity in your position. So uh, don't transfer it unless you plan on kind of, uh, yeah, transferring the, the position itself. So now this takes us back to the portfolio page. Um, yeah, so we get to see the capital that we just provided. You get to see kind of general stats. This should all look pretty familiar. Um, actually, one thing that I forgot to mention here is you know, one difference with our implementation is that we don't have multiple fee tiers per pool. So this was an intentional decision that we made. Initially, we felt that only having one fee tier initially would be um, a better user experience um, for, yeah, because we found that kind of multiple fee tiers was a pretty confusing concept, but we definitely do uh, have the capacity to um, add multiple fee tiers at the smart contract level. So that is something that we plan on adding um, post initial launch. But currently uh, this pool has a fee rate of 30 bips. Um, yep. Yeah. And then if you want to um, withdraw your liquidity, you can do that here. And then if you want to top up, you can do that here as well. And yeah, that's about it. Um, Oh, actually, one more thing that I wanted to mention is um, this also tracks, you know, not only the trading fees that you're accruing, but the um, kind of the yield farming rewards that you are earning. And also, um, if you click uh, here, 
um, this will kind of, uh, you know, harvest all of the trading fees and the token rewards uh, that you're accruing for all of your positions. So this should be fairly handy for anyone that is constantly monitoring multiple positions. Um, and that's it. So on the trading, on the exchange side, um, everything is, uh, you yeah, know, the, the whirlpools are automatically routed. So um, the front end will route the order to whirlpools or not whirlpools, depending on which one provides the best execution. So for traders, uh, you don't have to worry about that at all. And yeah, that's about it. Um, hope you enjoyed the product and please provide feedback on Telegram or Discord. Thank you.